So I want to talk about Christian children's media slash sometimes propaganda. I'd like to note, I do not think teaching children to be religious is a good thing. I do not care what religion it is. I think you should wait until they have the critical thinking skills to introduce religion to them. Otherwise, it's indoctrination, intentional or not. I'm going to be going over three different shows and just so, showing some clips from them and comparing why I have issues with them. Uh, that being the Donut Man slash Donut Repair Club, Veggie Tales, and Creation Adventure, which is made by Ken Ham. The only one of these I watched as a kid was Veggie Tales, and if you've seen my other videos, you know I didn't grow up religious. I watched Veggie Tales because my parents thought it was harmless and it was kind of cute. And there are issues I hold with it just by value of teaching kids religion. But that being said, whenever I was a kid, not growing up, knowing people were religious at all, whenever I was the age of kids that watch Veggie Tales, that being like younger elementary schoolers, I didn't even know they were from the Bible until I was older. Um, in fact, I just recently, a few years ago, really realized, oh, wait, that was a Christian show. Because to me, I had only heard those stories in Veggie Tales. So to me, they were just ancient world stories like stories that took time and took place in the past they weren't real stories that I thought people actually believed so I'm gonna go over like I guess the differences between these shows why I hold the biggest issue with Ken Ham's show the least issue with Veggie Tales, but also how I think you can present Christian media to kids in a way that's acceptable and what makes Veggie Tales different than the Donut Repair Club, which is just straight propaganda and guilt tripping. So I'm going to go through each show from most harmful to least harmful, in my opinion, and just give a basic explanation of what they are, show some clips that illustrate why I think they're harmful, and then essentially compare that to my neutral ground of Christian children's media being Veggie Tales and why I don't think uh, that that really portrays the same issues as these other two shows. Um, now, I will say I watched Veggie Tales in like the early 2000s, and I know that I'm pretty sure it still exists. So this is me talking about early 2000s Veggie Tales, like 2005 Veggie Tales, not like um, whatever. I think it's like on Netflix now or something, whatever that is. So there may be issues with that that I'm unaware of, but I'm talking about old Veggie Tales. <laughs> So the first one I want to go over, which as you hear me talk about the next one may be surprising that I think this one is worse, but in my opinion, the most harmful out of these is the Donut Repair Club slash Donut Man. Um, this is a show, essentially, it's one of those little like kids live action, almost like Elmo Sesame Street style kind of shows. Um, and it's about a club by a man who basically, quote unquote, repairs donuts by making an analogy that the don't the hole in the donut is the hole in your heart where Jesus needs to go. And this doesn't sound too bad. I mean, the idea of being incomplete without Jesus is a little rough, but you could portray that in a way that I don't think would be absolutely awful. But I'm just going to show a clip here or a few clips and really show the way that this is explained is really, really gross and just is a breeding ground for shame and self-hatred. Each of us is just like this donut. Remember, we're empty and sinful inside with, with no power to do the things that God wants us to do. Not until Jesus comes and fills up that hole. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot. Yeah, well, we all do. But when we ask Jesus to fill our heart with his love, well, he helps us to love others and to be more and more like him. I think that did an okay job speaking for itself, essentially telling all children you're a terrible person and you're incapable of being anything else until you have Jesus. But as we go throughout this episode, which is an Easter episode, um, you will see that this show is essentially in teach teaching children how to indoctrinate others and manipulate their weaknesses or troubles. It has these really weird, dramatic gender roles for no reason and creates a little bit of that kind of evangelical fundy culture war type thing where they go on to talk about how Easter isn't about eggs and bunnies and those things are terrible. It's actually about Jesus, which if you have never grown up that way or known anyone who's grown up that way, which I have, it is again, not from my own personal experience, but from people I know and my father, it's a very isolating thing 
to not be allowed to go to Easter egg hunts or take a picture with the Easter bunny or whatever because you aren't allowed to do that because that's taking away from the purpose of Easter, apparently, even though Easter is a stolen holiday. Look. <gasps> hey, I like it. <laughs> I'm the very first Easter donut. I'm the Easter Donut. <laughs> I'm the Easter Donut. <laughs> Duncan, I'm Dun the Duncan, donut. Duncan, Duncan, I hate to break the news, but the, the Easter story is not about bunnies or colored eggs. It's not? No. No, Duncan. Easter is about Jesus, about his dying for our sins and coming back to life. That's huh? the story we're telling. Oh, I, I guess I got confused. Sorry. I know this doesn't seem like a big deal. And in the grand scheme of things, compared to other stuff in this show and shows like it, it's not. But they can't just let kids have fun. And I'm really glad that I didn't grow up religious and I got to wear bunny ears and eat peeps and stuff instead of sitting in church in an uncomfortable outfit for four hours. And I mean, maybe I'm overanalyzing, but the way that the character, the, the donut thing, acts so ashamed whenever an adult is saying actually no you're wrong this you're you're taking something that's supposed to be about our lord and savior and making it about bunnies and eggs and the shame that they portray on that character is very intentional these things are put here to portray that shame and that kids are supposed to feel that way just like in the first clip and as we go throughout the episode you'll see that they manipulate grief to try and get this woman who, throughout the episode, it's found out that her husband, who was a friend of all these kids, died, and they have a kid go up to her and basically preach at her. And I mean, it's obvious this woman is already religious, but essentially say, get over it, he's in heaven. Now, I will say, there are good things to believing in heaven. If it comforts someone to believe that a loved one died and went somewhere like paradise or whatever and they get to see them again that's fine I again don't love the idea of belief without proof I don't exactly think believing a lie is healthy but that's not what this video is about I acknowledge it can give people comfort and this lady was already religious but the implications of this um and the way it's worded which of course is no fault of the kids it's whoever wrote the script is that those who don't have faith in Jesus do not get that and that they need to spread it it's teaching kids at an early age how to manipulate and indoctrinate other people and abusing that grief to bring people into the church, which is a really common thing Christians do. That's why most adult converts to Christianity were at a vulnerable position in their life. They lost a loved one. They're recovering from addiction. They're an ex-convict. They're an abuse victim. They came from a cult, something of like that. And that's why there's very few level-headed adult Christian converts converts is because you have to get someone in a vulnerable position to make them like when they're desperate to believe something good that's why children and vulnerable people become religious and why people who are just curious about religion and learn about christianity generally don't convert i mean i'm sure there are some who do but it's not a common thing and it's teaching very young children i mean the children in this show look like they're around 12 but this is obviously aimed at younger children and it's, it's making it clear to children that whenever someone's grieving, the right thing to do is preach at them. And not everyone is going to respond in the way that this lady did and get comfort from it. And some people belong to other religions and are going to go, well, you're saying so-and-so is going to hell because they weren't a Christian, because they were whatever religion this person may be. Maybe they were a Muslim. Maybe they were a Buddhist, whatever. And that's not comforting. That's angering. It's, con it's trying to convert people and take advantage of their grief. So we're going to stop with this show here just because I think I got the point across of it. I'm sorry I had to show so many clips, but this is a lesser known show. And um, it's also just not as clear from the title what it's about. The next one we're going to go into, I'll show a few clips, but not very many, probably just one or two, maybe 30 seconds, because the whole premise of this show is the problem. It's Ken Ham's creation adventure. And if you know anything about Ken Ham, Ken Ham is the one who created the Creation Museum and Ark Encounter. He's a young Earth creationist who does not believe in evolution, believes the Earth is 6,000 years old, thinks the flood was literal. He's a biblical literalist. He thinks everything in the Bible was literal, which anyone with an education could tell you otherwise. He has a diploma mill degree. In other words, he paid for a diploma without going to school. 
And he did what I'd struggle to call a debate with Bill Nye, where Bill Nye absolutely just demolishes him because his whole point is Jesus. And Bill Nye goes, oh, look, I have facts. And he goes, I don't like that. Jesus. I actually heard about this show from my favorite movie and documentary, Jesus Camp, where there are clips of this show very briefly shown with one of the characters it follows watching it um, before starting, you know, evangelical fundy homeschool. The show is essentially teaching young earth creationism to children. And while my issue with the other show is emotional manipulation, my issue with this show is false information and creating conspiracy theorists. The reason I find the one before more harmful is because it has more of an emotional impact. Yes, kids should not be taught that evolution isn't true. Creationism is an absolutely abhorrent belief. And it's just, it's pretty much as much of science denial as flat earth. It's, it's literally terrible. If you want me to make a video on young earth creationism, I will gladly do so because I got a video copyright struck by Ken Ham and that pissed me off. So I'm totally open to doing that if anyone wants to hear and learn more about it. But my issue with this is false information while the other one is emotional abuse. So while I think this one is full of much more false information and much more stupid beliefs, because the other one, while it's mostly teaching basic Christianity, it's doing so with emotional manipulation. This one is just blatant false information. According to the Bible, God created everything in six actual days. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, on the seventh, he rested. Huh. Kind of like a week. And at the end, he said, this is good. Very, very good. All the land animals were created on day six. And since dinosaurs are land animals, that would mean they were created on... on... Day six, exactly. The same day as man. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what you might be thinking. Dinosaurs with man? But see, in the beginning, it was a perfect world with no death. Man didn't yeah, have to I'm be afraid of dinosaurs. <laughs> In a perfect world with no death, how could there be fossils? Since fossils are a record of death. Agent Moeller, look at this. The Bible makes it clear that death, bloodshed, disease are consequence of sin. So as much as I really want to shit on the production of this, it was made in 2003. I will bite my tongue, just know I'm very aware it's bad. But this is just an intro um, to, I believe this is the movie version of it. There's a show and a movie, but I believe this is the intro to the movie. Um, yeah, it's showing blatant false information. Most theologians agree that the creation story is not literal, that the earth is not 6,000 years old, etc. Um, so this really is just peddling false information to children and science denial, which if you know me, I do have a big issue with. Um, but I have a bigger issue with emotional manipulation and abuse, as do most people, which is why I see the other one as more harmful, because this one isn't really telling you, it's not made for kids who aren't Christians to become Christians, or kids who are learning to be Christians, stay Christians, but it's made for extremist evangelicals to prime their children for the outside world, telling them that evolution exists. There's no how to convert people aspect. There's no you're empty without Jesus. They assume you already know all that stuff and then just go, by the way, science isn't real. Well, they say science supports them, but what they're saying is science isn't real. So while I find this show disgusting, both in an aesthetic way and a moral way, the other one is much more damaging. This one is just really, really brain dead. But that doesn't mean it's not a problem. Uh, it's still indoctrination. It's still propaganda. It's just less emotionally taxing propaganda. Now, the next thing I want to get into is how to do Christian media for kids right. Because I do think as much as I don't think we should be teaching children to be religious and should let them make their own decisions, I understand parents believe what they believe and they think it's the right thing to teach it to their children. I get that. And there is an okay way to do that because, I mean, I grew up, again, watching VeggieTales. It didn't force me to be Christian. It didn't guilt me into being scared of God. It was just Bible stories with vegetables. 
And even a non-religious audience of kids like myself could enjoy it and think, this is kind of funny. The art is cute. I like it. It's entertaining. Without the whole, you're empty without Jesus. Science isn't real aspect. Just, look, here's some Bible stories with vegetables. Now, I'm sure there are aspects of Veggie Tales that I did not understand as a kid that were trying to force me to be religious, even most likely in a more subtle sense, because Veggie Tales is generally much more accepted by a secular audience as okay than these kinds of shows. But I think what Veggie Tales does right, first of all, is not having a narrator unless it's one of the characters itself or sometimes just God. That there's no one there to be there's no one there to be a teacher, right? Like with these shows, there's a teacher figure. Whether in the other show it's Ken Ham, in the Donut Man, it's the Donut Man. There's someone there to tell you, you are doing the wrong thing. This is the thing you need to do. And VeggieTales doesn't do that. It presents a story as though it's fictional, which I mean, in my opinion, it is. But it presents it just as any other cartoon would. It's, oh, you know, we went to Sodom and Gomorrah and their depiction of that was people throwing fish at each other, which I will never forget that scene because it weirded me so much out as a kid. But I thought it was so funny. And it doesn't teach it in a way of if you act like these people, you're going to hell, you're going to die and you're a terrible person. It just goes, look at this story. This has a good lesson. Let's teach it to kids. And I think that's fine. Um, I mean, again, I do hold an issue with it being taught as a fact. It's to me, it's the way the parents present shows like Veggie Tales that causes an issue, not the show itself. The shows that I showed before have a core issue with them, and that's the indoctrination and shows like Veggie Tales do not. They can present themselves as stories that you can just take what you get from. Or parents can present them as this is a little fact and if you don't believe this, I hate you. And you know, some parents do do that. But that's a result of me having an issue with indoctrination, not with the show itself. And I think that is the right way to do Christian children's media or just Christian media in general. I didn't grow up with any damaging views from watching Veggie Tales, right? Like I didn't think gay people suck. I wasn't scared of hell. I wasn't scared. I was constantly sinning because it doesn't preach those things. It just says, this is the Bible story. Look, Jesus is cool. And if you already don't believe in the Bible, like I didn't, you just watch it and you go, this is an interesting story with cute animation. And that's what you take from it. And if you already are a Christian or your parents are trying to make you be one, then you take the Christian aspect from it. So it's like, it really matters how it's presented, but the other two cannot be separated from their harmful beliefs. Veggie tales can be enjoyed by a secular audience. But the Donut Man is inseparable from its indoctrination. There's no way to watch that as a kid and not take away, I'm doing something wrong. There's, it's fundamentally flawed just by its premise. And there's a lot of Christian shows like this for younger and older children. And they are propaganda. I, the first time I saw that Donut Man video was from ex Fundy Diaries, who I recently found reviewing it because she watched it as a kid. And I was just, oh my God, there's so many clips from that. I will link the full episode of that. It is absolutely horrific. I just wanted to cut, I wanted to narrow it down since I was going to talk about multiple shows and just show a few clips. But it, it's an absolutely disturbing experience if you've never been a Christian to watch that, or probably as an ex Christian as well. It's, it's an, absolutely it, it floors you it's like they're showing this to children they're saying you are disgusting empty sinners without jesus like just blatantly saying that to children to elementary school age children this was more just a rant and to expose people to the kind of reasons why i don't think teaching religion to children is good because this is what teaching religion to children is at least christianity this is what teaching christianity to children is and it's very obviously not healthy from an outside perspective. Um, so that's really all I got. Just like, if you want to leave a comment, did you watch any of these shows? What's your opinion on Veggie Tales? Do you think it's harmful like these shows? Yeah, just give me your take with Christian shows if you watched them as a kid and what you think about it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was entertaining and not too angering. Have a good day, guys. Hadebra. I stare at the populace in prayer